Hello, everyone. This is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, thank you for tuning in to my channel. I am certainly thankful for the opportunity to speak into your life. Well, today I am talking about re recognizing curses and restoring blessings. Recognizing curses and restoring blessings. Well, this is a topic that is not preached very often in the church or even taught in uh, just regular teaching sessions. So this is a topic that I really want to to educate people on because a lot of times people struggle in their lives and they don't understand where the root cause come from. You know, the enemy, he is very subtle. He works behind the scene. He does not want to be discovered. So I will educate you on some of the things, how to recognize if a curse is operating in your life. You know the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28 says, Look, today I am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. So right here, the scripture lets us know we have the choice to choose whether we want to live a blessed life or we want to continue to live under a curse. And I can definitely say, in ministering in the area of deliverance, I have come to discover that the enemy wants to be hidden in the background. That invisible barrier, that invisible spirit that hides in the person's life. I can tell you for a surety, when you go through repentance, renunciation of generational curses, self-imposed curses, regardless of how it came into your life, that spirit will show its ugly head. I can definitely say generational spirits need to be dealt with. Self-imposed curses need to be dealt with so that we can walk and live the victorious life that God has called us to. So we're talking about breaking curses and restoring blessings. Is your life marked by continuous patterns of defeat, bloodline curses of alcoholism, drug addiction, adultery, or something else that has been plaguing your life? Now, Derek Prince says, a curse could also be likened to a long, evil arm stretched out from the past. It rests upon you with a dark, oppressive force that inhibits the full expression of your personality. You never feel completely free to be yourself. You sense that you have potential within you that is never fully developed. You always expect more of yourself than you are able to achieve. And I would say, just like I said uh, earlier, that a spirit that is behind a curse does not want to be discovered. In fact, that spirit will hide in your life. But when it is confronted, it will show its ugly head. One of the main spirits that, that is of a generational curse is a familiar spirit. Or a, sometimes it, it is called a monitoring spirit. So I will definitely educate you on how to recognize these types of spirit, how, how they hide in your life. How do these curses come about? Well, the definition of a curse is the reverse of to bless. It's the opposite of to bless. So on the human level, a person can wish harm or proclaim a curse over someone through the words of witchcraft rituals. <clears throat> and you may say, Cynthia, how does someone uh, declare a curse through their words? 
you can simply de declare a curse by speaking neg negatively over someone or someone is practicing witchcraft rituals. On the other hand, a curse can come from God for the purpose of divine judgment and punishment. So I will talk about some scriptures in Genesis uh, about how God released a curse upon mankind. Another doorway for curses to operate is through self-imposed curses through the words that you speak over yourself. So as we look at the foundation of scriptures, we see that curses began with the fall of man. So we can also impose curses upon our very own lives. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So through our very own words, we can give demonic spirits legal access to our lives. If our confession is negative, full of wary, evil, unwholesome, uh, just outright anxiety, we will open wide the doors to demonic spirits. They can only gain access if we give them permission. And oftentimes there is a iniquity in the bloodline, whereas forefathers, they were people that wearied, they were full of anxiety, they never relied on God or trusted in God. So that iniquity of not relying on God, depending on God, that iniquity can pass on to the children up to four generations. Let's look at some foundational scriptures, starting with Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And in verse 17 it says, And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree from which I commanded you not to eat, curse is the ground because of you through toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Now Adam and Eve, they opened the door for a curse to come upon their lives. Not only did it impact their family, but it impacted mankind thereafter. So a curse was released upon mankind. Not only was a curse released upon mankind, but it was pronounced upon uh, the serpent and in the land. So Adam was see, uh, sentenced to a life of hard labor. So whereas before Adam could, you know, easily uh, experience abundance, prosperity, and peace, um, uh, be free from um, the spirit of death, be free from the spirit of disease and fear. But instead, Adam opened the door to a generational curse to operate in his life and upon mankind. So he said to the woman, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. What pain you will give birth to children. To Adam, he said, curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. So we see the first divine judgment, divine punishment, been released by God, this curse upon mankind. So, however, uh, even though this devastating curse and judgment will, was released upon Adam and Eve and upon mankind, the good news is that God is full of great compassion and mercy. There is hope for us. There is hope for you. The scripture says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Now, so the scripture lets us know in Numbers that uh, 
God is long suffering. That is his character. He's long suffering. He has great mercy. He's he's a forgiving God. He forgives iniquity. He forgives transgression. But however, the word of the Lord also says by no means clearing the guilty. So if the forefathers practice all kinds of iniquity, uh, this iniquity, this continual pattern of sin will pass on to the children up until four generations. This is what the scripture says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. But there is hope for God's people. We have to choose to be proactive to receive our deliverance from generational curses, self-imposed curses, no matter how they came into our lives. We can receive God's healing power, God's delivering power in our lives through repentance and renunciation of our sins and iniquities. Now let's look at the word iniquity. Now iniquity means to, to bend or to distort the heart. Also it implies, it implies a certain weakness or a predisposition toward a certain sin. For example, um, if someone's father was an alcoholic and that they have children, their children have a tendency or have a bent toward alcoholism. So this is what the scripture is saying, what iniquity is. So if you commit a certain sin once and repent of it and never do it again, then that's the end of the thing. However, when you see a pattern, you're continually repeating this sin over and over. Your sins becomes an iniquity when you keep committing the same act over and over. So it goes from being a sin to an iniquity, something that is practiced over and over again until it becomes spontaneous. Right there, when you see something spontaneous happening and, it, and you feel compelled to repeat that sin, that iniquity, that's, that is an open door that possibly have come through a generation of curse, not necessarily a generation of curse. It could be something that you open the door through your own sin, your own iniquity. For the enemy to have a legal right, a legal access to you. So, so if a sin is repeatedly uh, committed, um, it becomes an iniquity which can pass down uh, to your children and your, uh, your children thereafter up to the third or fourth generation. So parents, we need to make sure that especially if you're a confessing Christian, make sure you're living your life according to the purpose and the will of God because we can't do things behind the scene and think you know nobody sees me doing this nobody sees me drinking nobody sees me committing adultery nobody sees me fornicating you know because these are all open doors to give legal access to the enemy to come into a person's life and so we don't want to open those type of doors for the enemy to creep in all it takes is a open door and the enemy just slips right on in and start influencing, controlling, compelling a person to continue on with that pattern of sin so that it can pass on right on down to the next generation. And so you don't want your offspring to have that bent, that weakness, that iniquity in their, in their lives. But we want to live lives so that we can pass on to our children a, a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, a life that loves God passionately. That is what we want to pass on to our children, a life of integrity. So parents, be proactive. Make sure you're living your lives according to the will and the purpose of God. And if there have been open doors, there is hope for you. There's hope for all of us because God is full of graciousness. He's full of mercy. But we don't want to just uh, take these things lightly and open the door to the enemy to our lives. So on my next video, I will be talking about recognizing the curses of generational curses. 
And so I want you to, if you have not already subscribed, subscribe to my video. Make sure you click the bell so that you can get my new content. I need you to start making comments. So this will help my YouTube channel. When you make comments and when you click the bell and you like the video, I need you to, to do all these things. So be blessed and have a wonderful uh, day. Look forward to the next video. I will continue speaking on recognizing curses 